in this video. We've come to not only the biggest mall in the USA, but we've come to the biggest mall in the world. If you went to every store and every restaurant, you could only spend something like four minutes at each one. Here, I will attempt to spend over $100 on mall food. This is a place I could not resist going into because it's called Wahlburgers, you know, like from Mark Wahlberg. How did this happen? But first, let's back up. If you didn't know, this place is called the Mall of America, and it's real big. How big? I don't know, let me research. The Mall of America has more than 2.7 million feet of retail space. There are over 520 stores, over 50 restaurants, and behind me, there's a freaking amusement park. If you went to every mall and every restaurant in one day in this place, it would take you the whole day, I guess. Wait, hold on. If you went to every store and every restaurant, you could only spend something like four minutes at each one. Here's the thing, we're now in the mid-2020s. Is $100 even a lot of money? Doesn't seem like it. Two people go to Applebee's, boom, $100. That used to be casual dining. Now it's casual, can I have that hundo please? I looked at some of the menus, I looked at some of the restaurants already. This place is not super expensive. There are no caviar restaurants. Maybe they have sushi that someone mailed here from Boston. But today, I'm gonna to start with the most affordable food and build up to the most expensive food that I can find in this mall. Let's move. Someone said, why is the Mall of America successful? Good question. There's about 10 people here today. Is Mall of America losing money? You know what? Today they're not. Boom, we've come to our first location right here. We are in the amusement park area right now. I came here first because I knew they'd have a lot of fair type food and that is some of my favorite food. Behind me, snacks and drinks. That's the name of the place, I guess. They had a lot of typical stuff. Dippin' Dots, popcorn, cocaine. Uh, don't say that. All right, my wife said, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then they had this right here. We used to make these growing up. It's a banana covered in chocolate and nuts. Oh wow, guys, take a look at this. It's dairy-free, gluten-free, zero trans. That doesn't sound inclusive at all. All right, let's open it up. First of all, it looks very phallic, I, and that's not my doing. Second of all, the nuts were a lie. Complete nut coverage. Now compare it to that. Wow, what happened? Let's try it out. There's a nice frozen candy chocolate shell on the outside. There is a hint of nuts. I think even if you had a nut allergy, this wouldn't even kill you. There's so few nuts. The banana texture, when it's frozen, pretty good. Overall, satisfying. This is a quick start. We have a lot more food to find. We're trying to get to $100. We're only 5% of the way there. Can we do it? Let's, let's find out. So as we're walking around the amusement park looking for more food, let's talk about this place. This used to be called Camp Snoopy. Now it's Nickelodeon Universe. So you'll find all the Nickelodeon IP here. SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, and a lot of stuff I don't recognize. I'm getting old. What's special about this amusement park is that it's inside. Now that's really important for Minnesota because here in Minnesota, we have about six months of winter. So for about half the year, you are not going to an outdoor amusement park. But here you can come in and enjoy year round. So we have just wandered into the Barbie Cafe. I am slightly out of place because I don't have children. Luckily, my wife is holding the camera and she's giving me that slight bit of credibility that I need right now. Otherwise, this is how you end up on a list. The menu, mains, shareables, desserts, and more. But they even have cocktails? Shout out to the parents who bring their kids here and then just get wasted. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be getting some pink pancakes and a pink shake. Come take a look. Multiple types of fruit. We've got cherry. We've got a strawberry that I think is covered in chocolate. And then we have a cookie. The whole thing is pink. That is the theme. Try it out. It's actually very delightful. Strawberry deliciousness. I'm gonna use a cookie to scoop up the whipped cream. Mm, not bad. Definitely whipped cream from a can. My favorite kind. Here, two pancakes, three dollops of whipped cream, and then a big dollop of butter in the middle. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of maple syrup. Get a little bit of butter on there. It's a double stacker, folks. Cheers. Very fluffy. I like the butter. It's sweet. It's mapley. Yeah, it's fine. The most important thing is that it's pink. Next, the pancakes come with french fries. I'm not sure that Barbie really cares about the health of your child. Give it a little bit of a scoop. French fry with Barbie aioli. Mm, garlicky and delicious. I love it. Finally, I've been given a cake pop. The name of it? Funfetti. It's pink flavored with sprinkles. Oh my. It's like pure cookie dough in the middle, but I like it. I gotta say, this is a lot of carbs and a lot of sugar for me to start the day with. Anyways, I'll finish my pancakes and I will go after I pay $26. It's not the best deal ever, but we got to experience the magic of Barbie. We have left the amusement park because I need something more substantial to eat. This is the third floor, the food floor, and here they have a ton of dining options. Let's check it out. Welcome to Revolving Sushi. Let's go. 
have just come to the most efficient restaurant I've ever seen before. This coming from Japanese folks, not surprising. The sushi, you can see there. But it seems like here they've taken every measure possible to hire as few people as possible. So, to order. Do you order from a waiter? No. You order from this. What about drink delivery? Does someone bring you your drink? No. That's brought to you by a robot. What about the food? You just grab it from here. Ah, but when you're done, surely someone needs to take it. No. You put it into this thing and it counts your dirty plates. It's amazing. Let's get to it. Let's get a couple Diet Pepsis. You know, even with all this technology, they're serving Diet Pepsi. So what's the point? Very soon, a robot will be delivering us a big glass of disappointment. Right here, our beverage robot has arrived. Thanks, beverage robot. How many employees have you replaced? How many people do they not have to pay health insurance for now? You'll never know the touch of a woman. All right, folks, here I am. I'm right by the revolving belt. What do we got? Oh, is this hamburger steak? Okay, I gotta, I gotta try it. I gotta try it. This looks more like a mistake than a hamburger steak. Ooh, they have real crab meat. Here we have some crispy rice and spicy salmon. Ugh. Ooh, this one looks nice. Cucumber. Huh, I think I'll let that pass. What kind of sushi is this? Right here we have seared salmon with jalapeno mayo. So we have our first course right here. Let's start with this. This is the fish. It's uh, kind of awkwardly cut. Maybe this was also cut by a robot. Hit it with a little bit of soy sauce. Cheers. Decent, the rice. It doesn't taste like Japanese sushi rice. Overall, it's like watching a seven-year-old play baseball. It's like, yeah, there you go. You hit the ball. You did it. Right here we have the fried rice with the salmon jam. This looks like it was good at some point. No. On the basis of pass fail, that was a fail. It is soggy, it's mushy. The salmon spread, I don't even know. Uh, what is that? Salmon flavored goo. Finally here, this is my favorite because this is the USA. We love burgers. We want to put a burger on everything. And so they've cut one patty onto one piece of rice. It's cute, it's quaint. Let's give it a bite. It's like a Salisbury steak on top of rice with some sweet teriyaki. It's very okay. But listen, there are many options here. You don't just have to stop or settle with that. Spicy popcorn shrimp roll? What is happening? Fine. All right, folks, I don't want to waste all my stomach space here, so I'm getting one more round, one more course. First of all, this is known as a Texan roll, invented in Hokkaido, Japan. I'm just kidding. I've never heard of a Texas roll. I see avocado, tuna, some spiciness, mayo, and then some crunchy bits that might be fried onions. Yep, fried shallots. Let's give it a try. It's very soft to the gills. It's spicy, it's tangy. The tuna's nice and soft. The rice isn't too thick or too microwave tasting. Overall, it's decent. Here, the spicy popcorn shrimp roll. Let's go for it. Three elements, cold rice, cold popcorn shrimp, but they heated up some spicy sauce. I think they were hoping the spicy sauce would heat up the whole thing. It didn't work. This was fun, but I'm ready to have fun somewhere else. Let's move. Boom. And we have come now to the food court and there is a lot of food here. Right now I'm looking around, I see Burger King, I see Panda Express, I see A&W, but who cares? Those are boring. I also see behind me a place that looks like it's called Poke. You've heard of Poke before. The Hawaiian dish, you know, rice, seaweed, salmon. But here they have a sushi burrito. It is like a Chipotle where you get a burrito that's made out of sushi parts. I've not lived in the US for 16 years. Is this commonplace? Okay, maybe it's boring for you, but for me, I'm very excited. Let's go. Here it is, take a look. I believe you jump in line here and then you choose your topping. Right there, you can see the menu. I'm gonna get the firecracker. Somehow it starts back here. Oh, okay, we've got a big piece of seaweed with some rice on top. She's gonna hit that up with some tuna. From there, salmon, some mock crab meat. That is avocado. From here, some jalapenos. Hit it with a little bit of firecracker sauce. Ooh, and other sauce, wasabi sauce, I assume. Iceberg lettuce, just to give it a little bit of crunch. Oh, and then this is right here, the roll, going for it like a true burrito. Incredible, it's all stayed in town. Oh mostly stay intact. From here, she gives it the nice diagonal cut, and that is complete. I can't wait to try that out. All right, folks, right here we have the firecracker sushi burrito. When I heard burrito, I was kind of expecting a flour tortilla. No, this is not that. This is a layer of kim or seaweed. This is the tough part right here, though. Is this a burrito? What do you think? Let me know downstairs in the comments down below. Let's give it a try. Immediately I'm hit with a flavor blast from this sauce in here. Wasabi and a spicy mayo. It's a better duo than Jared and Subway. Let's try another bite. Soft, tender fish. I am impressed by the handleability. Final thought, sushi in Minnesota can be rough. The conveyor belt place, eh. But this, this is sushi redemption. Let's keep moving. We have left the food court and we've come to our next destination. This is a place I could not resist going into because it's called Wall Burgers. You know, like from Mark Wahlberg, the rapper. He's done a little bit of acting too, but mainly I know him as a rapper. Um, how did this happen? Somebody said, hey, Wahlberg, how about Wahlburger? And then he's like, 
I'm gonna make a lot of money off that, thanks. I love burgers. Am I gonna love a wall burger? I'm gonna go inside right now and find out. Let's get wall burger. All right, folks, I've got the menu right here, and I gotta say, it is pretty simple. There's not a lot of options, and it's pretty cheap. The most expensive burger that I see is 12 bucks, so that's super reasonable, especially in the Mall of America. As much as I love coming back to the USA to eat junk food, one thing that makes me sad is that all the typical kind of American restaurants are all burgers, sandwiches, salads, wraps, the end. And that's kind of what this is. It's burgers, but you know what? It's called Wall Burgers and not Wall Fried Rice. That being said, I do see one thing that does really stand out, the jalapeno bacon wontons. Let's see what that looks like soon. And then it appears. These here are the most unique items I saw on the menu. First of all, let's talk about this. Asian food, kind of. So they're using a wonton wrapper and then inside of it, I don't know, jalapeno and bacon. Is the bacon on the inside? Is it on the, it's on the outside. Let's try it out. It's a wonton cream cheese jalapeno popper. It's equal parts spicy, sweet, and salty. It's pretty good. Another bite. It's like a jalapeno frosting. I appreciate it. At least they tried something new, because that is what's hard to find. Cleanse the palate. Ah, Diet Coke. So those are the wontons. Right here we have Minnesota State Carbohydrate Tater Tots. This is a tater tot made from a sweet potato. Cheers. Super crunchy. It's been hanging out for a little while because we had to get a lot of sexy food shots. Ooh, sexy food shot compilation. Yeah. And we're back. Um, so it's almost steamy, maybe almost soggy on the inside. That being said, it's yummy. I like it. Alas, we have some protein. So basically, it's a burger, but between two pieces of bread. We've got melted cheese. We've got tons of sauce, two beef patties, bacon, and cheddar. Let's go for it. Respectable, juicy, the patties are well seasoned, nice crispy bacon, some tangy sauce, a little bit of a pickle to offer a little bit of sourness. All in all, I think it's pretty delicious. I can't get over the price. This is only like 12 bucks. It's super reasonable. At this price, it's basically a charity. From here, we're moving on to our next and most expensive food of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to our final destination, but there was a challenge before we got here. Just across the way, Cadillac Ranch. There, they say they are serving Rocky Mountain oysters. What are those? Those are bull testicles. My favorite kind of testicles. Why? Because they're gigantic and, well, elephant testicles are illegal to eat. So, what happened? I went there, I sat down, I tried to order them, and they said, sorry, no moss. So, we did the next best thing. We went across the way here to Crave, the fanciest restaurant, perhaps, in all of the Mall of America. Here, it's a mix of American and Japanese. This is actually our third Japanese spot today. But that is also going to be the most expensive spot of today because they have one menu item here that costs $130. What is it? We're gonna find out soon, but first, some appetizers. First, we have a crab and lobster tower. Snow crab dressed with spicy chili crunch and lime juice, layered with avocado, mango, and lobster tossed in spicy mayo, served with crisp Belgium and Dive. Let's try it out. Oh my God, that's a whole cloth. Sweet and delicious. The temperature did surprise me, but the waitress told me when I ordered it, she said, it is cold, just so you know. That being said, I still like it. This is like a layer of cake. I'm gonna slice it like I'm slicing some birthday cake, and I ruined it. I regret everything. This is a big pile of deliciousness. It looks like there's some mango in there, maybe some fake crab, some sauce, poppy seeds. Okay. It's chilled, it's sweet. The foundation of this whole thing is avocado. There's carrot. It is fresh and refreshing. It's basically a bunch of fruit, avocado, seafood, and mayonnaise. Our second contender, right here. This is the lobster mac and cheese. Lobster meat sautéed with garlic and diced tomatoes, deglazed with white wine, tossed with cavatappi in a fontina, gruyere, gouda, and lobster cream sauce. Finished with toasted seasoned breadcrumbs and truffle oil. Guys, what is a cavatappi in a fontina? I think I've come to too expensive a restaurant. I don't know any of these words. So there are big chunks of lobster in here. In the middle, some of the cheese has dropped down. So I don't want some dry ass noodle at the top. I want a wet and creamy noodle with some lobster meat. There, take a look. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I'll throw some respect on that. That's good. The noodles, not quite al dente. Slightly soft. There's a, just a gentle, creamy cheese sauce on there. The best part is obviously these big, beautiful lobster chunks. It's just not something you see every day on mac and cheese. 
So this is our first course and we're building up to the final course of the day, something that cost $130. What is it? You're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest hits platter underway right now. That is gigantic. This is without a doubt the most expensive food you are gonna find in this mall. It is five different rolls. She explained it all to me and I forgot it all already. I just remember she said King Kong at one point. Let me give it a nice rotation. We have nigiri, we have sashimi, we have different types of tempura rolls. It looks like there's jalapeno on top and maybe even ranch. This one is known as the crunchy roll. I'm gonna try that. Good overall. I think it's been hanging out a little bit too long. That's my fault. The shrimp tempura has become more of a shrimp sponge pour up. Otherwise, there's a delicious glaze of a sauce on there. Oh, look at this. And you can see the tail sticking out. That is the true sign of a shrimp tempura. Let's go upstairs. Over here, our roll with the jalapeno on top. Oh my God, it's sweet, it's spicy. There's a load of cream cheese in the middle. I kinda like it. There's a Minnesota boy in me. Makes me wanna go out and pick corn. Wrong season though. Next, let's venture downstairs. This one in the middle, they've fried the entire roll. Oh yeah, looks like we've got some tuna and we've got some more cream cheese, baby. It's delicious. Somehow, they turned sushi into junk food. They like, the Minnesota State Fair fried the food. It's amazing. Here we have some cilantro, tuna, spicy mayo, cucumber. All right, let's try it out. Not bad, but I think we peaked with the King Kong roll. So there you have it, the greatest hits of Crave in the Mall of America and the most expensive food we could find in this place. And that is among 50 plus restaurants. And by the way, this is far more expensive than the dust. And by the, <clears throat> and by the way, this is far more expensive than the next most expensive thing we could find. Boom, in this video, I set out to spend over $100 in the biggest mall in the world. And I also ate Japanese food at three different price points. I don't know the concept of this video anymore. Here's what happened. American restaurants, Margaritaville, Rainforest Cafe, uh, they all have the same shit. So I had to try to find something outside of the usual. So I got a giant sushi roll platter for $130. In the end, did we actually break $100? Well, let's find out. We're contabulating our efforts right now. Yes, I got, I knew it. It was tough, but we did it. A day full of eating, six locations, 17 foods, 11,000 footsteps. I'm tired, but it was all worth it. Next, you might be wondering, Mall of America, is it worth going to? My answer, actually, yes. I know I talk a little crap here and there, but it's a fun place to kill the whole day and to, I don't know, drain your savings accounts. Overall though, the restaurants aren't that expensive. It's just that the only thing there really is to do here is spend money. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. I have no idea where I parked. I know I should have taken a picture. I don't know where I parked. I parked somewhere. Where the heck did I? I'm gonna start unlocking my car from here and see if I can hear it beep. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.